Hello and welcome to the make log number 5. The cases offered by GoPro for their camera do not meet my requirements. I wanted to charge the camera underwater, which has been shown in another video. This is the setup. We have the camera and an external battery, which is put into an aluminum underwater case. Let's put this all away, because in this video we're gonna have a look at my case with a video transmitter, which sends the live signal from the camera. So, we have the case here. You see, it is a normal case. I have put two wires here. This is for charging the camera and for supplying power to the video transmitter. The normal GoPro mini USB port has got 10 pins instead of a normal 5 pin mini USB connector. It is hard to see the pins here, so I have a big picture. You see there are 10 pins here and the 10 pins are used for 5 volts, USB data plus and USB data minus. This is like a normal mini USB connector and the ID pin is important to enable the video output of the GoPro. You need a pull down resistor with approximately 300 kilo ohms. And we have ground and microphone input and video ground, video out and audio out which use the video ground. With a connector like this you can get the video signal out of the GoPro camera. This is a normal CVBS or FBAS video signal so it's like the chinch connector, the yellow one you know, for example from the NES or so on. So let's open it and see this is the cable I have built. All 10 pins are connected here and we have microphone output and USB and the video out of course and the audio out. What I have done here is uh, I have connected the video out and the audio out to the video transmitter. So the audio from the microphone of the camera is also being transmitted. Let's have a look at the case. You can see I have used the skeleton backdoor case, the extended one, so air can go through it and cool the video transmitter. I wanted the video transmitter to be protected when I mount this camera to my RC car and the RC car crashes somewhere. Let's put the camera inside, just connect the 10 pin mini USB connector, put the camera in and close the case. So that is all what has to be done. The ID pin, which I have shown in the list before, is also now connected to the resistor. So if you switch on the camera, the resistor causes the camera to go into the video mode. So the camera is now outputting the video. You can see it if you click through the menu, you see the video symbol here and this is the proof that uh, the resistor is connected to the output pin and the video signal is being transmitted. Of course, if the transmitter is connected to a power supply. The transmitter that is built into the camera can be found when you're looking for TX6722. Also, you can find the receiver when you're looking for RX6788. I have a setup here that shows my receiving setup. You see a TFT screen. I, the TFT screen gets the signal via this cable from the receiver. It's the blue PCB here. And the receiver also has a power supply. That's this one. It's directly connected to the TFT screen. And from the TFT screen the power wire goes to the receiver. And from the receiver and there goes another wire to this big black battery. It supplies the receiver and the TFT screen with power. So if you switch it on, the receiver has power and receives and you see the TFT screen is charging. It's a navigational system and no TFT screen. I can, I can show it to you in detail if you're interested. And that whole setup is built onto an antenna. It is a directional antenna I have built on my own maybe five or more years ago. Um, it, it improves the signal in one direction a bit, but the strange behavior of the receiver 
um, it's like this if the receiver loses the signal for a moment um, you see a, a line break in the picture it's a weird effect and I don't have this effect with other receivers so this is the whole setup when the camera is outputting its live picture I can see the picture and this is what I was using when um, I was driving around with the RC car and the gimbal build on it but the TFT screen is unfortunately so bad that you can't see a picture when you're outside so I think FPV glasses or a sunshade around the TFT screen is a better idea so this is basically the setup um, you can use for getting the live picture from the GoPro if you have any questions just let me know and I hope to see you again